Let's connect to the United States of America now. Nanado Poku uh, is, is a man who lives there, who works there, and he's joining us from New York. Nana, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, New York, the city that never sleeps, is now on a lockdown because the cases are rising. What can you share? Um, well, kind of, it's, it's a bit morbid because at one point, um, during the height of the virus, we were getting about 700 deaths per day. Um, so as of right now, it's kind of fallen to about 150. We still have uh, a lot of cases coming in, right. which actually is about 500 a day. So that's still a problem. So we're not out of it yet. Um, the state of New York itself, certain regions mm. are going to be, um, the lockdown is going to be lifted. Right. However, right. New York City and uh, its sur uh, surrounding areas, it's, uh, we're still far from uh, being under lockdown. How are you surviving? Uh, you're indoors, obviously, but how are you surviving? Um, <laughs> well, you, you do what you can. Um, basically, you don't want to use the subway because it's basically a Petri dish for the virus. Mm. Um, you know, they're doing their best to disinfect and, and, and doing everything, but you just don't feel safe. Mm. So... Most of the times you just pretty much stay home and, um, you know, and, and, and read or watch television. I can tell you something. Television ratings have gone way up. Wow. Unfortunately, the other thing is that domestic violence has gone way up as well. Mm. That is a big problem. So we can celebrate on in, in, in one things. And then on the other hand, women can't report these cases of domestic violence because they've risen so quick. Wow. And, and what's the state doing about it? Uh, that people are trying to stay indoors to stay safe and they are being abused? Well, the, the, they try to put out as much civic education as possible about it, um, especially in the daily briefings that the mayor and the governor do as well. But, I mean, in, 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 in a situation like that, there's not really much you can do, especially when fear and trepidation of going outside and, and all of those things come into, come into place. The, uh, the conversation about uh, a month ago and what pertains now, what, what's the vast difference that you can report? Well, people are, it's, it's getting warmer. So people are letting their fears down a little bit more. Mm. Um, so you see a little bit more, you see more people around town more than you did um, at the height. Mm. Um, however, there's, there's still no end in sight. We have a lot of people who are uh, unemployed at the moment mm -hmm. and they don't know when the next check is coming. So a lot of people um, are being furloughed, have lost their jobs, um, have taken pay cuts. I mean, the situation is, is, is not good, but uh, we're seeing how best we can survive. We'll, we'll come to the economic question, but just about a month or two ago, Nearly mm -hmm. about 2,000 deaths were being recorded, you know, in the United States, for example, a day. Has anything mm -hmm. changed? Yes. Um, well, for New York, like I said, deaths are down. But in terms of other places around the country, um, you can see that the, the outbreaks uh, are rising. Numbers are rising all across. Um, so New York, we're happy that numbers are, are, are going down. In other states, certain other states are also going to open. And, and this is where uh, the leading expert, Dr. Fauci, says that there should be caution in reopening the states hmm. because of the threat of a second wave coming in the fall. Now, the, New York thrives heavily on the economic activity. I mean, the city yes. that never yes. sleeps. It, never is, sleep. is business back to normal uh, now that debts are reducing? No, business is not back to normal. The New York City is still on lockdown. Right. Um, and I, I just want you to uh, put this in perspective about the subway. You have about 475 bus stations, mm -hmm. right? And about 12 hours of railway. Okay. So you have about 5 million people who ride the subway every day to work. Mm -hmm. 5 million. Uh, average wow. in a week. Wow. So wow. imagine imagine how the uh, how the virus can spread very quickly. Mm. That's, that's 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 shocking. Yeah. Now yeah, it's very very shocking when you see the numbers. Yeah, it's uh, the 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 subway. It, it runs about from 
here to Chicago. That's how long it is. So imagine all those people in the subways when one person has it, it can spread like wildfire. That's why the subway had to be shut down. That's why the lockdown had to be uh, had to be in place. So the, the, let's localize this. You've stayed in Ghana. You've stayed in the U.S. as well. When you say from New York to Chicago, what distance are you talking about? Is it from Accra to say Kumasi to Kentampo uh, to Ebri? I'm, 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 I'm talking about a 12-hour drive. Okay. That means we're going all the way to the north. Yes. 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 That's how long the subway system is. That's how long the rails are. And so if you have about 5 million people a day who are riding the subway, mm. it's, it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. It has to be shut down because this virus, as we see, has beaten us as, at every turn. As mm. of right now, in New York, uh, we have about 100 cases of a new pediatric multisystem inflammatory mm. syndrome, which has uh, taken, uh, I think we have about 100 cases and one mm. fatality. In one of those stories, mm -hmm. a child who was eight years old suffered cardiac arrest. Mm. Fortunately, he survived. He's a survivor. So we thank God for his life. Mm -hmm. But this is something else New Yorkers also have to worry about. Because at first, they didn't have to worry about children. Mm -hmm. They had to worry about their grandmothers and their grandfathers. Now, children come into play. So this virus is tough, but uh, God willing, we, we will all beat it. Well, we will beat it. The Ghanaian community, I'm sure, have been having conversations among yourselves. What have they been saying? What are their own perspectives? Those who run businesses there, uh, those who came to school, those who came for medical checkups, what have they been saying? It's, it's disrupted everyone's life. Um, for, for the better or for the worse, um, we are in the situation where we are. I, I have a lot of friends who've actually... Um, had uh, the virus and thankfully recovered. Um, I've had some people who've also told me they've had their aunties and uncles also pass away from it. Mm. So everybody is really wants to be safe. Mm. That's the main thing. Everybody really, really, really wants to be safe. And no one wants to go back to those days where we were seeing on TV that there were about 700 deaths a day. Right. You begin to be desensitized when you start seeing numbers like that every day. It, it becomes heartbreaking. I've seen an advisory from the uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry here asking for citizens in New Jersey, in New York, and also in Connecticut to come home if they wish, and that arrangements will be made for them. Are you picking indication that people are taking advantage of this arrangement? Yes. Um, I've, I've heard word, word has gotten around. Um, I've, I've spoken to a number of people who are, who are going to do that. Um, and, uh, and, you know, New York has become the epicenter. Mm. Um, it, a lot of people do not feel 100% safe. I know a lot of friends who maybe were on vacation outside and are, you know, are not coming back to New York anytime soon. You know? Wow. It's, it's tough. And another thing I want to mention, at the height of the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, I, have a, I have a nurse who told me that she had about 30 plus people in a room gasping for air for more than 12 hours. You don't I mean think it. About so, so think about what that does to the to your to your mind when you go home and and these people come to work every single day and they do their job diligently that is why we salute the uh the healthcare workers mm. of new york state because they have truly done yeoman's work Leonardo, you have to stay safe and, and be uh be protective of your family as well well thank you very thank much you. for your time this morning you guys be safe Great. take care and that's Nanando Poku, who is a Ghanaian resident in the United States of America, New York, sharing perspectives uh, with us.